You ever been scrolling for three days and then finally there's the movie you've been looking for this whole time, all these years, there it is, falls right into your lap? Happened to me, man. It's Drewski McGillicuddy's The Super Movie Review. Hey everybody, it's Drewski McGillicuddy, and that's correct. I spent several hours last night just scrolling and 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 finally there it was on Voodoo of all places free with ads and that's the super from 1991 starring Joe Pesci and I feel like I haven't seen this movie since the 90s. I also have a feeling that there's a lot of you out there that maybe grew up in the 90s, maybe you were born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s, born in the 90s, grew up in the 2000s, and you have no idea what the super is starring Joe Pesci. And here you are, one of these people that's like, oh, I love Joe Pesci, yet you've never seen the super? And I hate to assume things, but I've never in my life heard anybody talk about this movie. And the only times I ever actually watched, I don't know if I ever rented it, because I don't remember it being rated R. Because it's so rated R. Because there's like, you know, F. Well they're, they're, well, they're in New York. So they're using the F word every five minutes. But anyway, let's get into the movie and what it's about. So we start off the movie and Joe Pesci's narrating. And then there's this young boy and his father. And they, they spend their Sundays together. And Sundays are the best days. Because that's when him and his father go out to all the tenants, because his father owns all the buildings in this neighborhood, and he collects all the rent on Sunday, so it's him going out and chasing these people down and getting the rent from them. Only thing is, this guy isn't just a landlord, he's a slumlord. He doesn't repair any of the problems with the buildings, he just collects that rent money. That's all he cares about is the rent money. And he doesn't even really view the people that live in these buildings as people. He doesn't want them to have like amenities like hot water, or heat, or anything that, you know, comes basic when you rent an apartment. Of course, this is New York City, this is the 90s, and a lot of people think this is like an exaggeration. But the 90s? I mean, not the 90s, what the fuck am I talking about? But New York City, the rent there is astronomical. Like, you could get a, a, a one-bedroom apartment where I live for roughly $400 a month. In New York City, you're looking at a roughly $1,500 a month for a one bedroom. Sometimes it doesn't even have a bedroom. Sometimes it's just a studio apartment. Anyway, that's beside the point. So one day, Louis's dad decides that he's gonna give him his first building. And he tells him, you know, uh, I'm gonna give you my first building. He's like, I don't wanna see you doing any repairs. At the beginning of the movie, Joe Pesci's you know, kinda just like his father. You know, his first day owning the building, he's like, well, I'm gonna, go collect all this rent money, and he goes around and he collects all the rent money. All the while, these people are giving him their hard-earned money, and they're asking him, when you gonna fix my sink? When you gonna fix this? When you gonna fix the electricity? And he tells this one lady when she asked for him to fix the electricity, uh, Lincoln did his homework by candlelight, which, you know, that's true. That's true, it's absolutely true. But it's 1991. This kid shouldn't have to be doing his homework by candlelight because you're a piece of shit and can't be bothered to fix the fucking problem with the fucking building. But it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay because it comes to be a judge orders him that either he fixes these problems or he gonna go to jail. Oh, but to sweeten the deal, I mean, she should have thrown his ass in jail right away just because of the condition of this building. I mean, it's criminal. It really is. It's criminal. But instead of throwing him in jail, she throws him somewhere that might be worse. She makes him move into the building that he is running while he repairs everything within 120 days. Because if he doesn't repair this building and get it up to code in 120 days, he's going to real prison. So I think that's great. That, like, and, and I would hope that stuff like this happens in real life because 
That's a great idea. You know, you got this guy, he owns this building, he's got all this money, but instead of spending the money on the building, he spends the money on himself. So it's like a vicious cycle of these people give him money every month, but instead of him spending any of that money on fixing up the dilapidated building, he spends it on a Corvette and stuff like that. Which is funny, because, you know, he has to move in to this building, which in the first couple of days, he comes out to take his Corvette for a ride! And I don't know if I could find the clip or whatever, but his Corvette's not necessarily there anymore. But basically, that's what this movie is. It's, you take this guy from this way of life, and you force him to go live this way of life with these people that he practically, well, pretty much he oppresses them by, you know, collecting their rent money, and then keeping it for himself, instead of using the portion of the rent money to fix up the building. So, Louis moves into the building, and he gets pretty much the most shittiest rundown apartment in the building. And he has to deal with no heat. I don't even think the water works. So then he comes across little Tito, and he thinks he's spying on him, because he's in his apartment, and Tito's looking at him through the window. He's like, what are you doing spying on me, kid? And he's like, I'm not spying on you. And uh, he says, you gonna try to steal my stereo? He's like, I don't want your stereo. He's like, your stereo probably don't even work. He's like, of course it works. Why wouldn't it work? And he plugs it in. Sure enough, it doesn't work. But it doesn't work because the stereo is busted. It works because the electricity in the building doesn't work. I almost forgot to mention that his father tells him, after this courtroom hearing, that you better not repair one single thing in that building or I'm taking you out of the will. That's the kind of person his father is. That if he helps his fellow human beings, that he will be stricken from the will. I mean, what kind of piece of shit do you gotta be to tell your son, who possibly might do the right thing, that if he does the right thing, that he's gonna miss out on millions of dollars? Fucking piece of shit. Joe Pesci lives in this building, and he's suffering. He, he invites his girlfriend over. And his girlfriend can't make out with him because she's afraid that the rats might be staring at him. So she leaves. And then there's this other woman who ends up being another love interest, which is probably my favorite part of the movie, is this uh, lady from uh, the Building and Housing Association, whatever it is. She comes to check the progress on the building's upkeep. And she notices right away that nothing has been done yet. So she thinks that... Anyway, so there's this lady, right? And she comes and she checks the building and Louis is instantly taken by her. He's just head over heels, I guess, for her. Like, he, 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 and it, it's the 90s, so it's got a lot of that uh, stuff that those people call misogynistic lines of dialogue. Uh, because, you know, he's telling her how good looking she is. He's telling her, you know, I got a great body. Uh, you should, I mean, you, you know, with this, with the way these styles are these days, you can't really tell unless you see me naked. Can you imagine seeing Joe Pesci naked, everybody? Uh, whew. But anyway, he lays it on pretty thick. Every time this woman stops by for a visit, he's laying it on pretty thick. But see, the thing about this movie is he starts out, he's a piece of shit, just like his father. He's a dickhead to everybody. He's constantly, you know, berating people. And then, slowly but surely, starts to change his ways for the better. Uh, it starts out with uh, him being invited to a basketball game. He goes and plays basketball with one of the uh, tenants of the apartment. And they have a good time, even though I'm pretty sure they hustle him. Uh, and then, before that happens, I'm pretty sure they hustled him before that. So he starts getting hustled by these people, but he doesn't realize he's being hustled. But then, slowly, they all kind of start being friendly with one another. Like, uh... There's a really great scene where they're all having a house party and he kind of wants to go, but he's too bullheaded to say, hey, can I come in and dance? So he goes down. Oh, also, before I forget, uh, this movie came out in 1991 and it, 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 it displays some of the greatest, if not the greatest dance song of all time. Anyway, so instead of him going in and like, hey, y'all mind if I come in? He's, he's, he's a fucking hard-headed jackass. So he knocks on the door and says, hey, shut the fuck up. Some of us are trying to sleep. 
which is bullshit. But uh, they, they stop the music, they look at him for a second, and then they go right back to partying, because fuck him, you know? Uh, but then the next day... What's, what was, but within the next couple of days, it gets unseasonably cold for the winter time, I guess. Because everybody's freezing. They're all banging on the door, telling them, you know, and it was already cold in this building. They were already complaining about the boiler being too low, and it's only like 40-something degrees inside the building. But now it's drastically cold, and they're banging on his door, wanting answers, wanting to know when he's going to get that boiler fixed. And he says, there's nothing wrong with the boiler. Just go, you know, you know, I'm dealing with it. You can deal with it. So he goes back into his apartment and he goes over and he starts warming his hiney on the uh, space heater that he happens to have. And then that's when Tito, who's mysteriously staring at his window again, sees him and gives him that, you motherfucker. So when he sees that, he realizes, man, I gotta stop being a piece of shit. So what's he do? He goes out and buys heaters for the entire complex. But his father shows up and says, Hey, 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 what is this? What are you doing? I told you not to give these people heaters. I told you not to do this. I told you not to do that. Why are they painting that building? What's going on here? He's like, calm down, Dad. It's freezing. He's like, I'm just giving them a little bit of heat. He's like, you're giving them an inch to take a mile. I don't know. Point is, his dad's a fucking prick. Okay? Uh, but he is no longer a complete fucking prick. He's trying to work on it. And work on it, he does. So then, that night, they have another party to celebrate the fact that they finally have heat in the building. And this time, Louie decides he's gonna drop in on them. And then he goes and he calls that lady who he's been harassing the entire time, who, you know, keeps turning him down and says, Hey! You want to come to a party? And she's like, uh, you're on house arrest. Because I, I don't know if I mentioned he's on house arrest. He's not allowed to leave the building. He's like, w w leave the building? What are you talking about? I'm at the building. He's like, I'm having a party with a bunch of my tenants. And from there on, you know, he's changed his ways. He's made a full 180 or 360 or whatever the fuck number it's supposed to be. And it's just a wonderful journey of someone going from being a complete and utter piece of shit uh, to a half-assed decent guy that'd be fun to hang around with. But then it continues to get worse when his father comes back and tells him, come on, Louie, I'm getting you out of here. We're springing the, er, we're, we're, we're blowing this pop stand. And Louie's like, eh, something funny about this going on. Like, what, what did you do, Dad? What did you do? And I don't wanna, I don't wanna spoil it. I don't wanna tell everybody. I mean, I've gone far enough. Uh, I, I didn't wanna give the entire movie away because like I said, this is like one of those hidden gems not only is it a hidden gem, it's super duper underrated. It's got a 5.6. Or is it an 8? 5.8? What? Either way. Either way, that's bullshit. That is complete bullshit. <sighs> Didn't even work. Didn't even work. I don't even have the movable transitions. Don't worry about that, everybody. Worry about this. This movie is heartwarming. It's hilarious. And it's, it's kind of, uh, what's that fucking word? Point is, this is kind of an important movie. So you can see, you know, both sides of the spectrum. You got the, the rich asshole landlords, and then you got these down-on-their-luck people that are forced to live in these fucking shithole buildings. And it's just because they can't afford to go somewhere better. Or something. I don't know. But this movie is fucking amazing. I absolutely love it. And I'm giving it the covenant. If you don't like it, you can go f*** yourself. But I'm sure everybody's going to like it. I, don't know, I couldn't think of a number or a letter, so that's what it's getting. All I know is a 5.8 is fucking blasphemy. Anyway, if you want to see this movie, you can either go out and buy it on Amazon... Unless you could find it in the wild, but I have a weird sneaking suspicion that this movie is out of print and overly priced. Overly priced? Anyway. But if you want to see it, and you don't want to have to pay an arm and a leg to see it, just download the Voodoo app. <laughs> Devon Graham's going to get so mad at me. Stream it! On Voodoo! For free! With ads! 
But anyway, I don't know. That was as good as I could do with what little I have. So if you've liked that, please be sure to click the like button, subscribe, ring that bell, uh, and then you can also leave comments in the comments section let me know if you've ever seen The Super or if this seems like a movie that might interest you. And then you can also consider donating to my Patreon. It'll help me uh, strive to get better at this shit. And then there's other social medias along with the Patreon that something, something. Yeah, you know what? I don't really know. I gotta go. I gotta go get ready for work so that I don't end up living in some dilapidated building in New York City that I wouldn't be able to afford anyway because the rent in this building is probably more than my mortgage payment on the house I live in now.